it's quite good that you were the last speaker in a way, because I think um, listening to the, the two speakers before and you're sitting or have been sitting in a position which you are both working with the theoretical, but you're also working practically as a creatively as an artist and have like generated your own works for the past 30, uh, 30 years, more than 30 years. And exactly with this, um, with this notion, and I think your, your, your website is called Performing Landscapes. So I think in a way it's, uh, it's, it's perhaps you're the person to bridge the gap between these the theoretical <laughs> and the political and how you actually manage on a personal level. Because you've also in this, in this, <clears throat> this journey said, uh, you've got more and more focused instead of perhaps becoming more and more political and more and more socially orientated, your work has also become more and more focused, which I find quite interesting, as you're finding you're getting closer and closer and deeper and deeper into something. So these are the two parameters which I think were when we asked you to, to con contribute, was this about how the balancing of the personal, the artistic, and you might say the social, the ecological, the political, which are have always surrounded this, this theme, this, this field. Okay, thank you. And, and it was really interesting to hear the previous talkers, but, but I was really worried that do I have anything to contribute because I really indulged with the opportunity to, to give an artist talk. I mean, I was uh, two days ago in Tallinn speaking, speaking of how to do things with artistic research, which was not at all about it, sort of uh, completely. So, so um, I already apologize, and especially people in the room, if you've had a long day and now, but, but I'll show a lot of images, but I want to make a bridge a little bit to, to what was said by, uh, no, just a minute. I have two books that I want to advertise for. So I also have books, even though I'm an artist. Um, <laughs> no, not this one. I have a third one. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, here. This is, uh, uh, this is, um, I have to share the screen, of course. Yes, sorry. Uh, share screen. Right. Uh, this is a book called Performing and Thinking with Trees, which is uh, openly available uh, on the, on, as a PDF in, in this website. Now I thought this would be a Zoom thing, so I would have put it in the chat, uh, chat but, but maybe it can, I can send it by email or something. So if you click here, you get the whole book. But I just read one section here from the back cover. It's very much practically about work I've done in two projects called one is performing with plants, the other is meetings with remarkable and unremarkable trees. And I advertise it by saying how to collaborate uh, with other beings we share this planet with is a central task for artists today. And the starting point for this text was the realization that we must find ways of relating to the environment that are meaningful from the perspectives of the ecological crisis and a new materialist and posthumanist understanding of our place in the world, meaning that we are not the only ones here. Humans are not the only ones here. And they suggest that artistic research can contribute by allowing for and generating hybrid forms of performing and thinking. Now, I'm not an activist myself, but, but these hybrid forms can involve activism, artistic activities, political activities, scholarly activities, uh, you know, uh, practical farming, wh whatever those hybrid uh, things might be. So far, so good. So, so uh, this is what I've been doing now. And I show one more thing before I, yeah. So if you're interested in this tree business, because I'm not going to talk about tree businesses. And of course, I'm interested in trees, individual trees, because I come from Finland, which the only natural source we can extract is forestry. So our extractivism is sort of a massive cutting down of trees on a daily basis that are not allowed to grow in, into their full age and so on. So this is uh, uh, the link to a website on the so-called research catalog, all these uh, images um, open to, to different pages. And to one basic technique that I've been doing, and, and I've now made it a podcast on SoundCloud, so if you're interested, you can listen to that. It's called Talking with Trees. 
So I, um, I transformed the, the tradition from performance art where you, where you do something in that very moment. You're not rehearsing and training and, as in theater or dance and preparing for a show, but you, you create something in that very moment. I do that by recording what I talk to the tree. Uh, but but that's not what I planned to talk about. I wanted to talk about exactly about this. Uh, uh, I show because this is also openly online and it's in English, even though the, the site is, it's called Performing Landscapes, Notes on Site-Specific Work and Artistic Research, texts from 2001 to 2011. So, and, so and, and, okay. and, and just one thing, we can hear you fine and it's all right, but there's the, on the slide it's... Uh... Okay, I have to try again. Make, make sure, otherwise we might get lost if, we, if you have another visual. Right. Yeah. Uh, so here is a, a type. That's it. Great. This one. Yeah, okay, so I have to uh, start again. This is just to advertise. It's a very, this is an old book and old text and, yeah. and so on. So it's about radio plays in the landscape and all kind of, um, but it might, there might be something that might interest you. And also a summary of the problems of the notion of landscape, which has been criticized in art a lot, that, that, that sort of landscape, but, but this is, um, well, it's old text, but, but nevertheless there, the title is the, uh, but now I want to, to uh, talk to you about uh, my slideshow. Oh, and please, Trevor, then stop me because I can go on for a <laughs> very long time. So please stop me. Right. Uh, what I prepared for you without realizing, and this has very little to do with climate change, actually, except that while working with this project, uh, the, the, which is called Animal Years and Animal Days and Nights, I explain later. Uh, what happened, it, uh, why it was called like that. It was uh, during the years 2002 and 2014. Uh, of course, the, the, the discussions about climate change, were, can you see this? No. We've got you full, we've got you just full on. You, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, just a minute, excuse me. I never learned this. I never learned this. How do you come? see? Um, do you see the share screen at the bottom of your yes, screen? Yes. Oh, I yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Excuse me. So um, the, this is what I prepared for you, and this is about an old work. So performing landscape was a big project, or not big? It was a project I invented when I was professor of performance art and theory. Actually, I was a Sunday artist for 13 years because I couldn't <laughs> uh, do anything, you know, teaching full time. But but. Uh, during that project, which was about documenting the changes in the landscape over the year, of course, it became uh, it became very obvious that that we at some point, you know, when there was no eyes suddenly, that okay, this really documents the change that takes place. So it was not planned in any way in relationship to climate change, but now it, it somehow becomes like uh, historical evidence, documentary evidence. Um, the, the project took place on Harak Island. This is a drawing. It's right in the center of, of uh, um, Helsinki, but there is no bridge to the island. So you have to take a ferry. And uh, I had a studio there. It's an, quite an interesting uh, place because uh, uh, it, it was, there is uh, uh, fortifications from Swedish time. Then there is some buildings from the Russian time. And then there is the uh, former chemical research laboratory with the Finnish armed forces. So the, and now it's a nature reservation area and a, a, and a bird, uh, bird, uh, bird's nesting protected area and so on. Uh, the, the names of these years uh, uh, came from the Chinese calendar. So we're, uh, we're, we've just started the year, uh, the year of the rabbit, as you know. It's a 12-year cycle, and people always ask, why did I choose that? It's because I wanted to have a year with a name. So a, a decade is not a cycle in the same way, but, but uh, what would be the next cycle after a year? Like, you know, a video loop in, an, in, in a gallery is a loop, and then the planetary cycle is also a loop. But what would be a decade is not a loop. So I thought that the 12 year uh, of the Chinese uh, calendar would be a loop. I didn't know by then that it's actually 64 year loop, so no chance. <laughs> so um, this, this is just to indicate, I'm, I'm showing you a few images. Uh, these are the places I went to during that year in question. 
and and I began uh, by making making how should I say I began by creating a performance practice. I'm trained as a theater director originally, so I'm not a performer. But but because I was teaching performance art, I thought I must have a personal practice. I cannot teach if I don't have a personal practice. So I invented a practice to perform for a camera on tripod. And I thought that uh, by doing this repetitive performance once a week, a year, I would, it was a comment to the classic performance art durational cycles, like Dösslingsier being tied to Linda Montana for in a rope in one year and so on. But for me, this was not ordeal. It was actually a, a rejuvenating experience to go there to, 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 to stand by the shore once a week. But first the idea was that, that the main thing was the action and the video was only a documentation and evidence. But very soon over the years, I realized that no, I'm actually making video art. So, so this project uh, describes my transition from performing artist to, to visual artist, you could say. And but uh, besides showing you this rough time lapse, you know what a time lapse video? If uh, normally you take like one hour, one image every hour, and and you can show, you can condense processes that way. But these are very very rough time lapse because it's once a week. And, and, and so it's, it's really not, um, but it shows the, the transformation of the landscape over the year. And in the beginning, as far as I remember, I was very sort of concerned with this idea that, that landscape imagery always tries to catch the beauty of the landscape. You always, you always try to make the image at the very most beautiful moment. And I wanted to show that, no, there are beautiful moments, there are ugly moments, there are indifferent moments. By keeping the camera in the same place, I could resist the temptation to sort of turn it towards the sunset in a way and make pretty pictures and so on. But that was the beginning. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, quickly just uh, uh, a lot of images which are video stills and, and bad quality. And I have to say that they're all very gloomy and in the and, and in the winter time, because it's all, always the first image of the year. So I only show you one image, and then you have to think about 50 or images, different variation of it, but I can't show you them all. And if I don't have time to show them all, I tell you that at the end, in 2016 to 2020, I was um, the, the principal investigator for a project called how to do things with performance. And as my own part in that work, I decided to revisit these sites and see how they had changed and what I would remember. And then I took like only one real-time session in each place and inserted the old bad quality video images as an installation in that. But now I start to show images and shut up and you take a rest and, and think if this has anything to do with anything of what we've been talking before. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to say that I, every year <laughs> I always, always also made one day and night. So instead of having every year uh, once a week, then one day and night every two hours uh, at some part time of the year and often with a sort of uh, more close up. So this is the day and night of the first year. Day and night. Christmas of the rooster. This is from Cap Verde, it's from the flyer from that year. So of course I did other works than, than this. Uh, the Mermaid in Copenhagen.
day and night in a small on a smaller uh, uh, stone base nearby. This is a bunker from after the Second World War for dismantling mines, not uh, uh, no mines, no the, the not mines, but what the explosives, and and the year was made on top of it. You can see a small figure on top of the bunker. It's like completely meaningless. And the last year of the snake, inviting other people into the swing, day and night. And then the year of the horse once again, the same as the first year, but only once a month. And now with new technology. So you you know this the the camera technology change in the middle to HD. All right, and uh, if I still have time now, the revisiting, you recognize the not the first one because that was all already made. And these are most of these are made into essays where I then speak on top of it, or they're published many of them, and so on. And the paradox is, of course, that the places have not changed that much. So the, what, what is inserted in the images are the installations. The, this is like the, the real-time material. And then the video works are there. Just uh, examples. This is not from the same place because there was thaw season and I couldn't get to the island, so it's from a nearby island. And then, uh, the, the, the fact you chose this project to show us, present, and this um, huge immersive work revisiting um, the place, consequently, uh, for 12 years, and documenting as you as you do, um, and re-engaging and uh, reconnecting. And is this 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 time span, this this massive scale? Um, did you think of that at the start? Did it did it grow? Did it was a concept, or did you also feel a need, or do you feel a commitment, or do you feel to be obliged, or do you feel part of the landscape, or did you? I mean, how did that how did that change the psychological state? I mean, what what what? So it wasn't a burden. It wasn't. It was a, I guess, a will, a, a need, or how how do you, how do you categorize that? The the. Coherence of the work is constructed afterwards. Each year was very different, although the technique was the same. That's why. So, so there was so some years were nice years, some years were not nice years. My whole thinking changed many times over during the whole process. But uh, this idea of why why I chose it for you is uh, is to to share the two basic techniques. I just want to show you soon because this is a Copenhagen link. Mm -hmm. uh, mermaid variations. I happened to be in Copenhagen on the 95th birthday on the, of the Little Mermaid. So here I am sitting and there were sort of, of course, there was a lot of, uh, it was very funny. It was very funny. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, this idea of revisiting was in a way um, um, seeing was there anything that could be somehow useful or how could they be used these works and I used them to create these essays where I was discussing some topics many of them but uh, um, I didn't know that it was uh, 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 I would engage in in a full 12 year uh, cycle but but uh, what I thought I would li like to share with you as something that might be useful as a tool uh, is first of all this idea of repetition 
this idea of, of returning to the same place and, and see uh, the, uh, the place in different uh, uh, seasons, in different day, days, in different light conditions. What happens? Imagine a place that is under construction or, uh, you know, uh, you'll soon see the one place that was changed. Uh, so, so this idea of returning to the same place again and again. And then the other thing is to uh, going back to old work, even if it's not the same place. To I always thought that that's the sort of, that's the last thing. Uh, that's a sign that you're old if you return and recreate, you know, like uh, works you've done like, like a young person. But it's actually very, very illuminating to go back and, and see how your thinking has changed. And so, so those two things I would, I would somehow uh, think would be valuable. This is soon yeah. finished, um, a few more years. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is the only place that really changed because it was turned into uh, the bunker you see in the image in the center was ch changed into a viewing platform with all these rails and constructions and, and uh, so on. So, so it's really, it's the only of these places. I expected a lot of places to, to have been changed when I started to return to them, but no, very few of them were really changed. Yes, thank you. So that, that that's what I somehow wanted to yeah. share with you, but then I yeah. hope that you have uh, questions that would bring these topics somehow together, because otherwise this is just, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how to how to make the connection, except this idea of, of documenting changes, because uh, artists are always supposed to be the visionaries who have the imaginative solutions and, and to, to be able to speculate. And, and I even feel like that when I talk to the Pines, that 100 years from now, people will be talking to Pines and, and then they will notice, oh, there were some people 100 years ago who already played with this, you know. So, so but, but these works are not about... Uh, visioning the future. These, these are more like recording the changes that take place. Yeah, that's, that's sort of all. Well, I think it's, in, it's, um, it's both very beautiful and it's also very, very honest. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's very clear and conceptually strong. So, but this idea of um, you're not commemorating or celebrating, but you are, you are investigating, I guess, the, 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 the growing relationship between you as a person, as a body, as a um, and 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 the landscape. Are you are you? Is it relational? Are you talking about relationships? And can you term, you could put terms on that relationships? That relationship. Can you put words into it? Is another kind of relationship. How do you? This this seems to be interesting for me anyway. And we talked before about the necessity to to also accept accept the acceptance of somebody in a certain situation. Um, are you reaching for acceptance by the trees, by the, by the landscape, as a human, as somebody who's interfering, as whatever? Are you taking us, civilization, on your shoulders or whatever? Are you still a netter? Or are you, I mean, who are you traveling into this wilderness and coming back? Who, on whose behalf are you doing this? The, the, the relationship changed a lot. Uh, these first images are, are very much sort of the human, the solitary human being resting for a moment in, in, in the landscape. And it's not wilderness. It's, it's right in the, you know, it's like you would go out. It's, it's outside my studio. It's like I would go to have a cigarette. It's the, the break image. But, but uh, I very quickly realized that this, uh, that's sort of, I'm, I'm recreating a very traditional view of the landscape with the landscape as a backdrop. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why, why the, the sort of in, encountering the trees, what like, of course, the vegetation was strange, uh, changing, and that was what made the changes in du during the year. But then this idea that uh, exactly the new materialist uh, and posthumanist idea that there is no environment somehow. Mm. 
actually. Like Stacey Alleyman says, it puts environment in question marks. Uh, there are other beings. And, and, and that's, of course, a tree is so easy to relate to because there is, they are big, they're mythologically, um, there is like Finnish culture is full of, full of uh, veneration of trees, despite the forest business and so on. So um, you could say that it's much di- more difficult to, to have a, a one-on-one relationship with the microbe or, or even with light, lichen or something that... that uh, but in some sense, I always also thought that what I do could be done by anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, this, the, the, the traditional uh, visual art performance art idea that, that it's not your skill, it's not your expertise as a performer, it's not your sort of acrobatics or your something, but it's, it's the fact that you just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, any other comments? Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that's a great. I think that's a great. Um, just do it. I think that's a great thing. To do, actually, I think that's fine. Um, cutting it to the bone. Um, yeah. Okay. You have a comment? Yes. Yeah, well, I, I do have a question for you, if that's okay, if we can take another minute. Um, I know people probably there are ready to break because it's been a very long day for you. But thank you so much for sharing this project, Aneta. Um, you know, for me watching it, um, you know, the repetitiveness of its production as well as kind of witnessing this kind of set of images to me made me think about kind of you as a figure, like bearing a sort of witness, even if it's not clear, like what you're bearing witness to. Um, and that that kind of slowness and stillness and even this kind of um, mundane aspect of the places that you're going is kind of part of what makes it compelling, right? That it's not the spectacular kind of, you know, this resistance to the spectacle that you mentioned. But my question is more along the lines of listening to trees and forests. Um, And if you think of this work differently now in light of the kind of growing um, ecological interest in kind of, and, and the the, the sort of newer technological means to kind of track and um, listen to forests relative to climate science. So I don't, I'm not an expert in this. I know the German scholar Birgit Schneider has written about this. I've heard her speak about it. And, but, and I'm, I'm familiar with like the experiment. Uh, I don't, I forget what it's called in the Harvard has a forest that that's totally networked with technology. So it becomes a kind of cyborgian figure, um, this kind of human, natural, non-human, assemblage, but involving a lot of technology where they're kind of attempting to gather all this data on a forest to understand complex ecological processes and specifically connected to change, um, climate change. So I just wondered if um, that form of kind of listening or attentiveness, you know, within ecology, if that you know, is something you've thought about or that sheds any kind of different light on your own interest in listening to trees. And Stacey Alimo is a, a close colleague and friend of mine here at University of Oregon, too. Oh. So it's nice to have you mention her work. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I'm thinking when you mentioned that, uh, I'm thinking on the one hand, there is, for instance, uh, a German guy called Markus Med- Med- Merder, who, who has made a, a piece called The Pine uh, and recorded the suffering of the pine in times of drought by, by sonification somehow. And, and yes, I, I respect that kind of work, but I also, I'm part of the BioArt Society in Helsinki, although my own work is not BioArt. And, and there was a workshop by two young girls who, who wanted to make music with plants and they put some electrodes on on plants and so on and I, I was uh, slightly irritated and I said uh, why don't you put uh, uh, some electrodes on your own skin you get also sound there because it, it's not this idea that we get uh, somehow a contact direct contact with with the trees by by sort of it, it's the same as if you take uh, you don't get contact with me if you take my blood uh, sample even you, you get a lot of knowledge from me from, but so uh, I, I I respect that and I appreciate that, but but I think it has its limits. So uh, I have to go back to what Nicola said. Somehow we need also this. Uh, I never thought I would say this. We also need this imaginative part that that we can somehow try to reach uh, uh, with our human faculties to to these other beings. I don't. I know it won't solve anything, but but the attitude that 
that things are not out there for us to consume, but there are other beings that that uh, uh, should also be able to live. And, and like everybody quotes Robin Wall Kimmerer nowadays, but but this idea of reciprocity, how it, it, it's a real dilemma for me now when I take seriously a relationship with a pine tree that I can't ask for consent. You know, <laughs> I go to a pine tree and I we I ask the pine tree to perform with me. And then I address the pine tree and we talk. If it would be, if I, I mean, you understand that if I go all the way and take seriously the fact that this is a living being, this is a living being that makes decisions, how it wants to live and how it can adapt to its circumstances. Uh, Monica Galliano has shown that, that plants have memory, they learn and so on. There's a vast, uh, there are too many problems. I have no solution for that. Okay, I think that we're gonna we're gonna end up today with that. Uh, perfect, perfect uh, for starting for the next day. Thank you very much, and it was really uh, heartwarming and really instructive. Thanks very much. Beautiful.